HMCS Haida is a tribal class destroyer. Uh, there were 27 made. Uh, 13 of those were sunk, 13 were scrapped. So Haida is quite significant because she's the last remaining tribal class destroyer in the world. HMCS Haida was built primarily as an open ocean escort destroyer. She uh, escorted uh, convoys uh, primarily, primarily in the early part of the war to uh, Murmansk, Russia. And uh, she was involved in the D-Day landings. For its time, it was state of the art. It was, uh, it was an extremely maneuverable ship. It was fast. They were kind of known as the Greyhound of the sea. Athabaskan was struck by a torpedo and there was a subsequent explosion and she went down very quickly. Uh, a lot of the men would have been um, uh, thrown into the water, uh, some very badly injured as well. Uh, so these guys would have, um, would have just been treading water, trying to hold on to debris. Um, the water would have been terribly cold because it was, it was only April. Haida chased off T-24 and T-27 and uh, they came back to the spot where Athabaskan was last spotted in the water. And at this point it was nearing the end of their patrol. It was very close to daybreak so they were in a very vulnerable position at this point. Uh, they, there was a risk of an airstrike, German airstrike. There was a risk of those uh, Albion class destroyers coming back and they didn't know if they would bring other ships or torpedo boats with them. So uh, the Germans knew their location, so they were sitting ducks. They, they had to get out of there, so they did what they could. The dilemma was, uh, you know, we have all these guys in the water, they're so close, they're this close to making it to the scrambling nets, and it must have just been a heartbreaking decision to, to um, fire up the engines and, and slowly pull away from that scene. So in the wee hours of the morning on April 29th, this is where Captain Harry DeWolf would have been standing on the bridge here, giving commands, uh, making quick decisions. Now, he instructed the crew to lower all of the life-saving devices into the water. That meant the Carly floats, which were made of cork, uh, which the crew in the water could hold onto, um, flotation devices, as well as two motor cutters and a whaler. Now, in addition, uh, he was uh, directing the crew to lower the scrambling nets and pull as many crew members of the Athabascan onto the ship. Uh, they were covered in bunker sea oil. It was a, a very difficult rescue. So he would have been pacing on this bridge, um, and he knew that at some point he had to leave. Uh, he didn't want to risk the lives of his own crew. Um, Captain John Stubbs, they could hear him in the water. Uh, trying to keep the morale up of his, his men in the water, getting them to swim towards Haida. The Haida crew members were working tirelessly to pull these guys on board, all slick with oil. A couple of Haida crew members even fell into the water in the process. Now, in the end, uh, Captain Harry DeWolf was supposed to stay for 15 minutes, but ended up staying quite a bit longer, about seven minutes longer. Um, so that made all the difference to, to quite a few lives. So it would have been a heartbreaking decision for him, but uh, in the end he did the right thing. Captain John Stubbs from the water um, yelled for Haida to leave, that it was time to go for their safety. 128 lives were lost that night. So that's roughly half of your crew. Um, 85 were picked up by the Germans and became prisoners of war. Haida picked up 42 on the scrambling nets and then the motor cutter picked up an extra six. So for a total of 48. She is emblematic of 
of the Royal Canadian Navy and the role, that, that sort of naval experience we had during World War II and beyond. She was also a very lucky ship and called the fighting a ship in the, in the Canadian, Royal Canadian Navy. Uh, she sank the most ships of any, any ship. Um, I think for those reasons, she's very special and she's the last remaining in the world.